So welcome to part two of our two-part series on orthodoxy and alien life. Now, today's question is, what is orthodoxy to make of alien abduction? Well, where I'm going to start with that is one of the more prolific studies that was done on the concept of alien abduction was done by a psychologist and professor in the 1990s. His name was John Edward Mack. Now, what he did was he took 200 subjects who all claimed that they had some form of alien abduction. And he noticed that there were eight distinct commonalities. Now, I don't want to go into all eight of them, but there are four that are very unique for this discussion. And I want to read them to you now. The individuals experience an ego death and begin to accept the aliens as a real experience. Two, abductees come to regard their abductors as intermediaries between human beings and the primal source of creation or God. Number three, the individual begins to feel that he himself is an alien when he returns back to earth. And number four, abductees come to understand existence in terms of cycles of birth and death over time. Now, if you listen very carefully, you probably heard a lot of new age terminology there. Enlightenment, the intermediaries, that I have entered into a spiritual realm, that I have died unto myself, that I could be reincarnated into a cycle. So the belief there is that this becomes kind of a mixture of what is real and then what they are experiencing or want to experience. Now, actually, we have an orthodox response to this. One of those responses we have to what John Mack observed is Archbishop Christostomos of Etna. Now, he was a professor at Harvard Divinity School and also taught in Sweden. And he specifically reacted to those New Age ideals of spiritualism and reincarnation and then transformation. We must come to understand that there is a decidedly anti-Christian tone in these eight stages that Dr. Mack identifies in terms of personal transformation of the abduction victims. Seeing life in terms of cycles of birth and death, identifying with other beings, the cessation of personhood, and looking to the cosmos for a home. These are all undefined, vague, eclectic things that violate the precise, Christocentric teachings of Christianity and the life of discipline and obedience that spiritual transformation entails. So what Archbishop Christosimus was saying here is these ideals that are based on experiences, which actually are part of Schleimacher's theology of the 19th century, which talked about that feelings are more important than actual truths, this becomes now the belief over truth. What we have in our orthodox theology, the precision of our theology, is that we are not intangibles. We know who we believe in. We know what we believe in. We know what salvation means precisely. We know where our home is. God has created the earth as our home. So we are not alien beings looking for a home. I want to read you now another one of his quotes. Moreover, at least initially, Abductees experience terror and fright in the presence of their alien abductors. Only later, after having been reluctantly won over by the aliens, do they feel secure in the presence of their abductors. This is classic demonic machination. Demons inevitably strive in a methodical way to overcome the initial and natural repulsion that human beings feel in their presence, gaining the confidence of those whom they seek to mislead. The spiritual effects of the abductee's contact with aliens draws the persons away from the teachings of the church 
and towards a demonic delusion that underlies modern New Age philosophies. So what the Archbishop is saying to us here is that we as Orthodox Christians do believe that we are constantly under now the rule of Satan and that he does affect our lives. And that what is being done here is much more of a demonic nature than it is of an actual then abduction. Because we have the classic Patty Hearst uh, idea here is that there is terror at the beginning, and most of you, if you've heard about these alien abduction stories, you know that. And then afterwards, then they come now to see, as the Archbishop said, they come to see their abductor now as a friend. And this is what happens now with demonic activity, is that as St. Paul says, that Satan himself can disguise himself as an angel of light, and that we are lulled into this false sense of security. Another point of view is to look at the evolution of humans historically. If we look at the medieval times or biblical times, they wouldn't have thought of this as an alien abduction. They would have seen that as some manifestation of some type of demonic activity or the supernatural or the presence of ghosts. But we today, we live in the post-atomic age. Science is what rules today. So it's gonna be silly for most people to think about ghosts and, and the spirits and those types of things. So what our new terror now is, is that fear of the unknown, just as it was then, but that fear of the unknown has now transmitted itself or has changed itself now into aliens and alien abduction. And that becomes then the scientific explanation that this is a manifestation of night terrors. Night terrors would be something where the mind wakes up before the body. So they experience some degree of body paralysis. And in that state, they are experiencing terror because they cannot respond physically with their body. And this is the time when they would be then susceptible to create images that would be either ghost-like or that would be of a spiritual nature because there is that desire on the part of a human being to be able to explain what it is that they're going through. So thanks for going with me on this journey through aliens. Now, I want to close this by saying that I am in no way endorsing that aliens exist, nor that orthodoxy says that aliens exist or that they don't exist. We are just presenting the vantage point from information that we already have. So the best that I can tell you at this point is as Mulder says, the truth is out there.